Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And this video is going to be an assembly video. I've been getting some requests about actually seeing me put something together, not just designing something. So, this is a design I've been working on, and I'm going to show you how I assemble this pencil dispensing box. Hang around. Okay, so I have all of my pieces laid out for my pencil distribution box along with all of the graveyard. This is all of the pieces and designs that I went through to get to this point for you. So you're going to identify all your parts and right now you're looking for these two pieces. These two pieces are going to interlock together like so and slide all the way together. Now this was my initial design template that doesn't have my slots in it. But you're going to slide those, identify those, slide those together, and they will slide all the way together flush. And you'll end up with something like this. You're going to have all of your slots lined up, and there's where you're going to glue in the cams for the hopper. Because that's what this is. This is a hopper. This is what agitates the pencils and also uh, distributes a pencil. All right, so we're going to install our first cam. I'm going to put a little glue down in the corners here in our slots. These are small, and you want to glue them in pretty good. And we're looking for a little piece. Looks like that. Hope you can see that. And on your hopper, you remember you got those slots, you know, and so the pieces, this how that's flexible, that'll move. And that's you're gonna move that out of the way so you can glue into the identify which one moves. That one moves, move it out of the way, and glue the tab into the bottom bottom piece here first and then you can push the tab up or the back up onto the other piece so that's going to go in here like so so we're going to slide this piece moves so we're going to slide that down out of the way glue this piece in and get it snap in place she's a tight fit and you want it to be and once that's snapped into here then you're going to push see how it's misaligned how it's curved we're going to push that back up into place and line it up and glue it in there and that forms a perfect 90 and now that's where she should be now we're going to glue the op one on the opposite side here same process and here it don't matter about the glue this is inside the box and we ain't worried about squeeze out we want this to be good and secure so that piece that flexes move it down out of the way put this piece in and then push that piece back up into place. And then double check, make sure everything's right where she should be. Oh, I did that wrong. I did not need that there. I needed it. Or I needed it pointed up. It's okay. Glue ain't set yet. We'll just pop that out. Turn it around. And then I'll show you what I did there. There we go. Because you want those pointing on opposite each other like that. I had that one pointing up here. Would have worked, but not the way I designed it. Now I'm going to take a little napkin and I'm just going to wipe out the excess glue on the sides that don't have my cams. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I want to use the same areas same or the same trough so just look see where it's at put some glue in there don't be stingy all 
this is going to go up this way so pull that down out of the way snap it into the fixed piece then the flexible piece snaps into place rotate around make sure you're lined up in the same place do it again and this is the first piece you want to assemble in this you want to put the hopper together first because you want this to have time to set up while you're working on all the rest of it get you some glue on there get that down and snap that back up in there we go that's looking good now I'll wipe up my excess out of my troughs well that's where my pencils are going to set okay so you'll end up with a, a hopper that looks something like that okay once you got that glued up set this over out of the way and let it dry up we want to set it over here to the side now you can start I uh, mean, actually start on the lid because that's something else that's these are these were trash. Don't get our scrap mixed up. That's something else that can be setting up and drying while you're doing it. And I cut out too many side pieces. Make sure these are all the same. Yep. Yeah. So I just cut out two extra. Well, if we don't need those. We'll set those to the side. Do a quick test fit, make sure everything's going to line up right. That looks good on those, and so those have got to look good because those two fit. All right, and now I'll start applying my glue, and I'll put glue on the tabs here on the, the flat surface. And I don't want a bit excessive because this is something I do want to keep clean but I won't put glue on every tab and then I come back in I put glue in the slots and we will have squeeze out we will clean this up because this is something that you want pretty you want it looking good but this is going to be handled by everybody and their brother. And if it's going into an elementary setting or even a high school setting, they're going to always treat stuff with the best respect. So you want to glue it up good and tight. It's a good tight fit. Got some squeeze out. Like I said, we'll clean that up. Same thing. Repeat. On all my flat surfaces and my tabs. And then my slots. Get glue on you, glue on your fingers. If you're working with a good glue, it cleans up with water. It won't, won't stain or mess up your piece. Alright, there's two sides. Repeat. Lots. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a good tight fit. And the last of the sides, all the tabs. And 
the slides. Square everything up. Get all the squeeze out going. And it's taking a napkin right now. I'm using a dry napkin, but I'll go back over this with a wet napkin and clean this up. Wipe all the squeeze out off. And we've got a phone call. My good friend, Spam. All right. Right, that's good enough for now. That's not completely clean, but that's good enough to let it dry. I'll set that over there for a few seconds, then I'll go get a wet cloth and clean that up. But before I do that, I'm going to start now with the, the, the main guts of the hopper. Uh, first, this is the shelf that the pencils are going to land on and then roll out of. I put a curb that goes on the back, which is this piece here. I'm going to put some glue along the flat areas here. This is what these are the slots, if you will. Or glue that in here. Got that tight. There we go. Oh, almost had it. We got that one too tight. I, variants in my wood. But I like the tight tolerance. And what I can do here, since this is not internal it's not going to be seen and I'm not going to go cut another piece I'm just going to take my little sandpaper and I'm just going to sand kind of round off and here and here we're not going to take much because I can guarantee you this is that close of a fit that in and get her flush. Alright, and that's good and tight. And these are probably going to be the same way. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and give them just a little quick sand.
and this isn't the wood that was really too wide so much as it is trying to put that 90 degree in there sometimes it's a little tough it's easier to insert rounded edges than it is 90 on 90 but you can't do that with the laser and I'd rather have a good tight fit like this okay I'll let that set up for a second now I am going to go get a wet cloth and I'm going to wipe down that so I'll be right back with water all right let's clean this up Just a wet towel. Just clean up all the glue, excess squeeze out, and clean up the soot. So that's good and clean. Let that sit. Let that glue dry up. The hopper's good. All right, now let's start with the sides. All right, the sides are identical, but you need to pay attention. That way they're identical. That's not, you know, you want to make sure you orient these so that you have them like so, so that the, is that right? Nope, see I just did it backward, like that. Because you want to have the angle lined up on both sides. Because that's how they're going to roll out. So, first we're going to start with, first we're going to start with the lowest ledge here. And I'm going to put a little blue on this tab, this tab, or slot, and here. And I'll leave a little bit right here because this is going to be protruding through the front. There we go. Now with that in there, I'm going to set her down. Now these are what's going to hold your pencils, and these grooves are here for the hopper to rotate through. So those go down and align with each other like so in a V. Just going there, so we're going to put some glue on these slots, or these, yeah, slots. And just so you can see, just going in here, just like so. And then this one is going to go 
like that. sit for just a couple of minutes doesn't need to sit too long we're going to let that sit kind of stir him up a little bit then what you're going to need to do is have something that you can set this on because you got to insert this hopper and it's going to protrude through the bottom so anything that you can place underneath here I'm just using the old lid that didn't work Set her on there like so. Now, since these are not directional, doesn't matter which way you insert this, just insert the hopper in the hole. Grab your other piece and see which way you want that slant to run. You want it to run just like so. Now we need to glue it all up and get that. Now this is where it would be beneficial if you were an octopus. If you had an extra couple of hands, So I'm going to go ahead and just put glue on all of the slots that I need to have glue on. Okay. And now you start trying to line things up. And I found it usually works better working from the bottom up. You got to get that hopper in position because it protrudes to the top. And line up that bottom. That's lined up. And you line up one of the other edges. lined up bottoms lined up and that's close to oh fudge that's why I say you need to be an octopus right, done, done. Oh, about pulled the bottom out you got to be careful because when you apply pressure here it actually can pull up on the other side get that back in place get that back in place and now there we go and now you want to give a good you don't want to be excessive with your pressure, but you want to get all that flush. Okay. There is our hopper. We got a little bit of bowing going on here. It's wanting to pull itself apart. We're going to keep a little pressure on that for a minute. Okay. All right. So the way that works, in fact, it's still pulling apart. I have to hold it for a minute. But as you spin this hopper, you see the little cams on there, they they'll rotate through those open slots and they protrude up through the top where the pencils will be sitting. And what that does is agitate the pencils. Because what I've discovered, when you're working with those hexagonal pencils, number two pencils, they could actually get side by side here and then not want to fall through the hole. They'll be too wide to fit through they, and they'll kind of lock themselves in. So by putting these cams on there, that pushes them up, upsets them, and then they fall through the slot. So there's push them up, and then it falls down and falls into the slot, and it rotates around in the slot. This is agitating them for the next one, fills that one, so it's always got one in the slot ready for distribution. 
So let's get this glue to tack up here. In fact, what we can do, I'm gonna go ahead and this will help facilitate keeping this squared up. Now all I gotta do is put the front and the back on it. Now the, the front is got a, a flat edge across here where this makes a perfect 90. There's no slot or tab or slot up here. Like it's slot there, no slot down here. This flat edge is the bottom edge. That's where the pencils come out. So go ahead and do just like we did before. I'm going to put glue on all of the flat tabs. Once I get this glued up, it'll help keep this square. Now I'm going to go back and put it in the slots. And I'm doing this because this is completely dry. It has no glue on it. So by getting glue here on both surfaces, it's going to glue up nice. And I can always clean up the squeeze out. It's a flat edge across the bottom. Get you one side lined up, kind of hold her in place, and then get this other side lined up and push her into place. There we go. That's done. Now, get another napkin. Wipe up the immediate squeeze out. And I'll clean that up just like I did the lid in a few minutes. Now I can flip it and put the back on. Curved, curved edge is the bottom. Same thing on all the tabs. And slots. Okay, square it all up. All that's done, now we just gotta put our knobs on our hopper. I do that is I leave a little space between the knobs it makes it just give you a wider grip so one goes on a little further than the other and I've got these little u-shaped pieces that cut out and go on here to create a T 
and that just reinforces the gives them added strength to this so that when it's being cranked on and cranked on and cranked on it doesn't eventually get weak and break off one of those ears if it was just that piece like so so we make a T out of it come on eat on there and I probably should have done this while I had it out I don't think about it until I'm putting the knobs on. There we go. And then, so that knob is touching my bottom, so I'm pushing on the knob on the hopper, not on the box. should slide inside that hole there we go there we go because so that will fit in that hole and that also helps keep that hopper lined up and centered and doesn't let it get whoppy job so it serves two purposes reinforces it and centers it in that hole I'll put a little bit of glue on my first knob piece back in here where I can set that. There we go. Here I will sometimes cheat again. I'll get that scrap of wood and my little hammer my little pecker, that's from our uh, powder coating video or live stream. Take my little pecker and peck it. All right, once you got her flush like that probably start to walk her down. You want to be careful because if you put too much pressure on this you can actually uh, get that to cleave and break split in two. So you want to be careful pushing this on. I thought I made these a little bit tight or larger. There we go. So I didn't have to fight this so much but you still want these good and tight. And just work it side to side. And I'm actually going to take and try doing this. I'm going to come right in here in the corner. There we go. check make sure she's good and square and she is I'm gonna clean that up while I can get to it because once I put my notes one on there I won't be able to get to that so I'm gonna get another wet nappy tight as that was I probably didn't even need glue but you won't glue them up it's gonna go through humidity changes you know depending on what grade level these end up in if they're used in the classroom there's no telling what it's gonna be subjected to Right. 
tight as that was, these are probably just going to be flush instead of leaving a gap in it. If it is a gap, it's not going to be much. I need to get it back to where it's putting pressure on that and uh, I'm pushing on the but you don't want to hit hard because you don't want to mess up that other side Sound change is now making contact. And that's good and flush. So a little gap in there just gives more room for little fingers. Okay, now I got to repeat that on the same side. Was that the lid I just glued up? I wasn't even scrap. Way to go, stupid. But hey, didn't mess it up. So now that lid is on there. Get some final cleanup to do. But that is one final assembled pencil distribution box. Now, what's that? You want to see it in action. Okay. Need to clean up that glue. Let's see how she works. Let's grab some pencils. So you take your pencils. Now these are pre-sharpened, ready to use. You place them in your hopper. And you don't even have to worry about getting them all settled because that's the whole purpose of those cams. And there's your pencil. There's your pencil. There's your pencil. And I want to show you how this works inside. I'm going to get it down to where there's enough where you can see. That looks good. Get these out of here. Now I'm going to make you all seasick. I'm going to put 
another one in here. All right, make you seasick. So the way this works, see the pencil's getting lifted and it falls down and out. And now you can, there's enough vacancy there, you can see the cam come into play. So it lifts them up and lets one fall down. Without that, those will get wedged in there and you're having to constantly shake the box to get those to, to distribute. Now, one of the things that I, one of the changes I went through, my cams, you notice when you assembled them, they are not directional. They are universal. They'll go either way. So right now I'm rotating this on this side. I'm rotating it clockwise and you see it works and it just spits a pencil out. Now I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise and it still works. You see how that, okay, see how those are getting locked up? That's the reason for those cams. And so yeah, I didn't have to shake the box. But with those cams, she'll work either way. I went through a couple variations of cams. I went with a, was it a shuriken? Kind of like a Japanese throwing star. Problem with that and the problem with this is they're directional. They'd only work one way. So it would, it would work fine when you rotated it this way. If you tried to come back this way, it would actually grab in that pencil and it would lock up. And I could see uh, 11th or 12th grader saying, you know what, I'm getting dead. And he breaks it and tears it up. So redesigned it to have a uh, bi-directional cam there. So I hope you found that informative or, or at least enjoyable to watch. Um, like I said, it was requested to see an assembly process. I actually put something together, not not just behind the computer designing stuff. I do actually build everything I design. I test it thoroughly, and you're seeing the graveyard of boxes and all the redesigns. <clears throat> excuse me, that I went through to get to this point with this design before I even present it to you. This design is available on hobowithwood.com. We're going to be demonstrating these on the Laser Makers Realm live stream. And we're going to be demonstrating pencil engraving and, in, and different templates and ideas on how you can set up your diode lasers for engraving pencils. So I'm like, okay, well, I've got a template to engrave 36 pencils on my diode. If you're doing all these pencils, how are you going to contain them? I said, well, you know what? We'll make this distri distribution box. Then I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to try and encourage in my local community parents to purchase 96 or 8 dozen engraved pencils. And if they purchase 8 dozen of those engraved pencils, it will come with a free distribution box. Now these boxes, they sell on Amazon all day long for $40 a piece. Not a design like this, some cheap plastic injected junk. You know, this is a nice handcrafted box that's gonna hold up much better than those cheap flexible plastic junk. I'm gonna give this box away to parents who are willing to buy 96 pencils I sell them for $10 a dozen, so eight dozens, 80 bucks. They buy 80 bucks of engraved pencils, and it comes with this free distribution box. Now they can take this and gift this to their child's teacher. Pretty cool, huh? At least I think it is. You're getting a $40 box, $80 worth of pencils, so it's $120 worth of stuff, for 80 bucks and then you give that to the classroom and then what I'm gonna recommend is maybe you do 
eight different inspirational sayings. They got to be short because you got to, you know, you know, you take a regular number two pencil, even when it gets sharpened down to a nub, you still want to read it. But something like, you got this, or, you know, I believe in you, something, I don't know, anything you want. Eight different inspirational sayings that you could put on there. So they get a random saying as they get a pencil. Something I thought would be neat. If, or, let's say, property of Miss Jones, property of, you know, whoever, the teacher's name. That way, if the teacher sees a kid with them walking down the hall, she can say, those are my pencils, and take them. Bring them back to the distribution. They're in the class when you need them. But that's my my idea. This is my design. It is available or will be available uh, on HoboWithWood.com. You now see how to assemble it. If you enjoyed this, if you're still here, because this is going to be a very long video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that uh, notifications bell so you see when those channel new videos drop. A super thanks button. It would be greatly appreciated. I go through a lot of time, a lot of material making these videos happen. So some re reciprocated love from you would be greatly appreciated. Hobowithwood.com to buy the designs. Patreon.com slash at hobo or patreon.com slash hobo with wood if you want to become a patron for this channel and be a regular supporter. And just a little bit of something, a little bit of surprise. My gold and my silver patrons, they're getting this design for free. Gold and silver patrons are getting this for free. Something to consider about why you should go ahead and sign up. Make that commitment. I've already given them my pencil template, template that I'm going to use to engrave the pencils. Bronze, gold, and silver got that. This is going to go to the silver and gold. So consider being a patron, but if you do, consider at least signing up for the silver and gold tier. They're going to get a lot more free files. If you're not in a position to become a regular patron, like I said, the super thanks is gratefully appreciated. I know you've heard me say it. If you've watched my videos, you're only going to be buying me a biscuit with the super thanks, and I appreciate it. I'm going right next door to Bojangles right now and get my brunch. So thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging around. Hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next video, I'm out.